Alright, hello fun and welcome back to my Fallout 4 mod spotlight series where today we are having a look at the Peacekeeper mod which is being made by user Zest of Lemon. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a replica of the Peacekeeper gun from Battlefield 1. And I've been having a lot of fun with this weapon so far as not only does it have a huge selection of cool, weird animations and even sounds, but it is, in kind of a roundabout way, a historic firearm, as this is, well, the Peacekeeper from Battlefield 1, which based that off the Peacemaker, which was, of course, the Colt Single Action Army. So good times there, a historic revolver for us to play around with, with loads of wacky animations, though there are a few oddities we'll talk about momentarily. But first, let's jump on over here and have a look at what we do get with the Peacekeeper, which in its standard form will deal 50 damage with a 45 round with a firing rate of 40, range of 59, accuracy of 58, and a weight of 6. So not too bad there. And as you can see, this thing is pretty pretty beautifully made. Very nice on the modeling and texturing, though I will admit a personal aesthetic preference here. I think the base standard texture is a bit too clean. We are in the post-apocalypse after all, but thankfully in modifications we do actually have a material category and you can change it up to a worn down rusted sort of hunk of a gun and that to me feels far more appropriate for fallout and i quite like that i always do love when we get material categories to change up the looks of weapons it is pretty darn neat now on the other modifications though this is where we start getting into some of the oddities with the gun i mean it looks great it has some fun materials it's well made but it doesn't really have other modifications. I mean, you can see we have four categories here, but there's none of the typical things, such as new sights, longer barrels, no like muzzle attachments, anything of that variety. Instead, you get the material change, a damage modifier so that you can use this thing longer into the game, and then the ability to change up the animations and the sounds. So very, very atypical as far as modifications do go in this game, which is strange, but I kind of like it. I kind of like it. It keeps the historical nature of the gun. Granted, I do wish at least there were maybe some sights. You guys know me. I like sights. But still, it is kind of weird, but I kind of like it. And the animation variations that you can do are pretty darn cool. Very weird, kind of wacky but I love them. Now, as for how you do get your hands on one of these lovely guns, well, first off, you are gonna need a mod requirement, that being the Tactical Reload mod for this thing to work properly. And once you got that, well, then you're gonna have another oddity here with this weapon in that there is nowhere in the world you will find this gun. It's not on any enemies, it's not in a chest somewhere, or lying on someone's grave. It is a weapon you purely do obtain through the console commands. That's it. Now, I'm hoping down the road, perhaps there'll be an update to this gun by the mod maker to add it to the level loot list, or at the very least, one in the world for you to find. And if they don't, I'm sure someone in the community will probably make their own patch to do so, but for the time being, this is only available through console commands, which is strange, but this gun to me is kind of one of those weapons with the crazy animations it has that you download just to have some weird fun with. But again, I do hope we get a patch for that down the road. Now, let us actually go and take a look at what modifications we do have available. I mean, I've pretty much already gone through them, where we have the material category, where we either have the standard peacekeeper, or the single action army one, which again is my preferred because it does make it look a bit more banged up and rusty, and I do kind of prefer the more, you know, traditional colored wooden handle there. Very nice indeed. Now then we have the damage multipliers where you can go from level 1 up to level 4 to make this thing do 87 damage, which isn't too bad at all. The only thing you're going to need for that is a gun nut, and that of course will keep this thing more relevant into the mid to late game with that sort of power. So not too shabby there. 
Now the other two, as mentioned, are animations and sounds. Now we have three different animation sets for you to choose from, with number one honestly being my favorite because it's the most normal, but on occasion, two and three are entertaining because they're just strange. And again, I like that we can switch between, between them, so if you don't want the weird and wacky, you can stick with the more normal in your day-to-day -day usage, but whenever you feel like it, you can change up to the weird and wacky. That's good times. Now, in the sounds here in the environment category, we've got four of either a field environment sound set, a forest, desert slash snow, or urban. And I gotta admit, just my own personal hearing, which ain't great, I, I personally don't hear much of a difference between these two, but there is a large amount of difference between these. Most of the difference in the sound is on the back end with the, you know, echoing of the shot. And I think this one's probably my favorite because it definitely adds a much more boom of an echo to things, which is kind of neat, though can be a bit distracting. But overall, fun that you do have the option to change between these. But before we do take a look at the other animations and sounds, let us uh, go to the firing range and uh, take some shots with this weapon. And again, I just, I love, I love the animations. Just whipping that thing out, spinning it around, it's very fun. But let's fire. And there we go. Good smooth shooting, very nice reload animation. And let's fire again, but down sight. There we go, very, very good, very different animations between the two views, which, I mean, of course, makes sense, and both look glorious, and the firing rate on this thing is pretty good, too. Let's just kind of just keep shooting. There we are, wonderful. It does have quite a bit of kick, though, per shot, so if you go through all six rounds, well, it's, oh boy, your gun's gonna be kind of going a bit all over the place, but it's not too bad, and I'd say fairly controllable. Now let's take a look at the other animations though first. Let me grab the Peacekeeper and that one. So this is of course the uh, variation one, the standard, which is good and I do like the reloading. I do like the putting the gun away, pulling the gun out, very cool. If we go to, I think, uh, this one. Yes, this one I have variation two on. And this is also using the desert snow sound. So we'll get a bit difference with the sound there. And there's that weird and wacky pulling the gun out animation. You're throwing it over your arm. <laughs> that is variation number two. Again, not something I'd want in day-to-day -day usage, but on occasion, it's fun to be a little weird. And then fire. Which, of course, is more or less the same as the other. So not too bad there. The main fun of it is in... <laughs> pulling out the gun. It's just, it's just amusing. It's very nice. And then, of course, we've got the variation three, which, whoops, did not mean to drop it. Whoops, oh, that's my fault. <laughs> okay, so back in to the variation three. I meant to hit X, not R, and I picked the wrong gun. There we go. Variation three, and this one using the urban sound on this one. That's what I wanted to check there. Oh, nice. And again, that weird, wacky pulling the gun out. It's a toss and a spin, and you're good to go. Takes a lot of time, but it's fancy, and who doesn't love that? And here's the sounds. Oh, yeah. Listen to that just crackling thunder-like echo. That was beautiful. That's why this one, the sound is definitely my favorite. The animation gets a little bit old again, just cause it's a bit much and it does take time, but it's cool to have on occasion. And let's actually go back to the standard one and just get a few shots with this and then we'll go to the forest. So if we take the, the six shots here. There we go, you kind of get like a louder crack at the end. And then if we change that up from field to forest, which maybe now that I'm doing the video, I'll hear more of a difference, but before in testing, I personally wasn't. But let's see. Okay, the crack is a little bit more on the front end of it than the back end, which I'm okay with. That's cool. But still, personally, I think this one's my favorite sound, and this one, 
Well, both of these are wacky animations, but let's get this one out. And, of course, fight our usual Deathclaw to see this thing in combat. And, uh, then see how it does. Boy, I'm gonna die, aren't I? Let's go back to you. There we go. Run away! <laughs> Randomly spin the gun on occasion, because why not? Oh, it's gonna take us a bit to kill this guy. Even with 87 damage, it's, it's, uh, it's a pistol. And my crappy, crappy shooting. Oh, and he's all the way down there now. There we go. We toss the gun over to the, our side. And boom. And a boom. Good range on this thing. Again, why I wish we could change out some sights to uh, get a more proper scope on this thing. Because, you know, it's, it's got that great range or usage at a distance. So, yeah, I wish we could at least add in, like, a short scope on it. But again, perhaps in the future, while our death claw is stuck there. There we go. Now we just got to reload. Oh boy, it's still gonna take a little bit to kill him, isn't it? <laughs> okay, Deathclaw, I'm glad you got stuck. That definitely helps me out with my crappy shooting. Oh, I missed him there entirely. And... Okay, okay, I think we're gonna need like two more reloads. Perhaps I should've just gone with Raiders. Perhaps I should've just gone with Raiders. But oh well, we're committed at this point. Okay, okay, Ooh, one more shot there. Beautiful. Alright, let's get a little bit more close and personal with him on this last one. Hopefully this should take him out. And... He's down! Magnificent. Now, one last thing I do want to say before we do end the episode, because I, well, forgot to mention it earlier, is that it is suggested, though not really required, that you change the FOV in the game for the animations. I think it's predominantly because with some of them, especially when you're chucking the gun around, you're just kind of missing it out of frame a lot, but it's recommended that you use a 120 FOV, which, ha oh boy, I would never play with in real life because, dear God, that is just way too much. But of course, you can see more of the animation when you are using it. But personally, I find with the default FOV, it's still perfectly usable. There's not much of the animation that gets clipped out. It doesn't seem to be doing anything weird for me. But hey, if you do like these Quake-style FOVs, have at it, my friends. Me, though. Ah, oh boy, I'll be going back to my 80 FOV later because that's much more reasonable. But that is it for this lovely mod. A cool gun with some great weird animations that's just a fun time to play around with. So if you'd like to take a look at this gun for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description. And hopefully you have enjoyed this one today and you come back for the next one. Until that time, thank you for watching. As always, well, have a good one.